Hello and welcome back to video three of week two of SAS Bootcamp. In this video, we are going to continue our discussion of conditional logic. Um, we are going to, I'm going to give you one more example of an if then else statement, and then we are going to jump quickly into a select when otherwise statement to do conditional logic. So for the if then else statements, the previous examples I showed you displayed both numeric variables and character variables. And I tried to show you how to string together different conditions using using Boolean logic operators, including parentheses and statements or odd statements. I'm gonna show one more example of how to do that. Um, for this example, we are gonna use the both data set that was used a couple of videos ago. This is what the data set looks like. There is a price variable, which is the key variable that we are going to be using for this particular example. Uh, you see, you'll see here that I've typed up the data statement here. The set statement uses the both data set within the class library. The data statement creates a new file that is called boats underscore taxes. And in this case, I'm creating a tax variable and I'm setting this tax variable to be one tenth of price, but only when a certain condition is met, that is when price is greater than 25. So when this condition is met in that row of data, tax is equal to price divided by 10. When that condition is not met, which is when price is actually less than 25, then I want my tax to be higher. It's not a particularly progressive taxation system, but stay with me here. This is an example. Uh, so for rows where price is actually less than 25 or even equal to 25, then tax is equal to price divided by five. I'm going to run this little bit of code right here. Make sure the log says there are no errors. Look at my output data. And there's the tax variable. And you'll see here that when tax is greater than 25, so when price, when price is greater than 25, excuse me, when price is 62, which is greater than 25, tax is one, one tenth of price, 6.2. 29.95 is greater than 25, so tax is one tenth of that, 2.995. 22 is less than 25, so in this case, tax is one fifth of price, 22 by, divided by five is 4.4. So this is just another example of how if then else statements work nothing new here. What I do want to show though today is the select when otherwise option for doing conditional logic. The select when otherwise is a different way to do the same conditional logic that we saw in if then statements, but it can sometimes make things go a little more faster. It can be a little more efficient. Let's talk about how. Um, I'm going to create a new data set called Poke type. And for this example, I'm going to use my Pokemon data set which is located within the class library as I've indicated in my, in my class statement. And the way the select when otherwise statement works is that the structure actually breaks down the if then statement to allow you to process multiple conditions within one statement. The way it does that is there is first a select statement as I'm showing you here. Select statement following by the name of the variable which is the basis of your condition. Then you finish that with a semicolon and you wrap that statement up. In the second statement, you write a when operator followed by the actual condition or what that variable should be equal to and then you follow it up with the statement that you want it to execute when that condition is met and you can chain as many when statements here as you want at the end of it you will add an otherwise statement which is similar to the else portion of the if then else statement and then wrap it up with an end condition and there's a semicolon after each of those things let's look at an actual example and hopefully things will be a little more clear I'm going to open the Pokemon data set so we see what data set we are working with. This is that variable, the name variable is the one that we want to work with. And I want to say that depending on the name of the data of the Pokemon, we want to assign a certain type to the Pokemon, whether it is a grass type Pokemon, fire type Pokemon, water type, whatever have you, right? So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to say select, and then the variable name, which in this case is name, semicolon. Then when, um, let's say Squirtle type equals water. So what this is saying is that the, when the variable name name is equal to the value Squirtle, and I've put Squirtle within quotes here because that variable is actually a character variable. There's a string of letters here, not numeric. Uh, so it's, it's, it's within single quotes. When this condition is met, then the new variable type should be equal to water. I can add more when statements here. I can say when variable name equals Bulbasaur, 
then type should be equal to grass. Or when name equals Charmander, type equals five. Right? So I can string as many of these as I want. So you can see here, if we were doing if then statements, I would have to write a separate if then statement for each of these names. Instead, within select when, you can actually chain these when statements as many as you want. The other thing that I want to quickly make a comment about is this little tab that I typed in. I could have, I did not need to type that. I could have just typed when right there at the beginning of that column. Instead, I typed a tab and SAS completely ignores that. It does not matter to SAS if you enter two tabs, five tabs, you can even just type it right there. Or you can just type it right here. You can do the, those empty spaces in SAS are completely ignored by the program. It does not affect whether the program runs or not. I like to enter that tab and structure my code this way so that it's a little easier to understand, a little easier to follow, to see what is going on. Now, the other advantage of using a select when statement is that you can actually combine more than one type of, more than one condition within each when statement. Let me show you what I mean. So let's say I wanted to say, when type equals when name is Caterpie or when name is Vido or when the name is uh, Kakuna or Beedle. So what I'm saying here is that when the variable name equals any of these things and I just separated all of these names nested within quotes by a simple comma and a space that's all I needed then type equals grass. So, so what this is saying is that if any of these things are met, then set, set the type variable to be equal to grass. And when you're done writing all these categories, you can just write otherwise, wrap that up with, excuse me. I have a sneeze coming there, I did not finish that. <laughs> um, okay, and then you have an otherwise statement, which works just like the else part of the if then statement. You can say uh, otherwise type equals, um, legendary if you want. If you actually don't have a particular type to enter for these otherwise, you can actually make it missing. And the way to make it missing is just not type anything. Just write your two quotes and, and leave it empty. Don't even enter a space in there. Just leave it empty. The last important thing of a select when operator, which most people will forget to use, is that end operator. That end is an important part of the structure of the select statement. Even though the select statement has semicolons after each single statement here, that end needs to be present in order for the syntax to work. And after the end, you, you have to enter a run statement just because every single data statement needs a run statement. I'm gonna select all of this. I'm gonna hit run. Check my log first. Log looks good, no errors. Now let's look at our output. I am going to filter out some of these other variables that we don't need to look at for now. The only variables we need to look at are the name and the type of the Pokemon. You'll see here it has said Bulbasaur is grass, Squirtle is water, Caterpie is grass, Weedle, Kakuna Beedle are all grass, and all the names of the Pokemon that we did not include in our select one statement are missing because that's exactly what we said we should do within the otherwise statement. Right? So that concludes the conditional logic part of if then. I'm going to pick up in the next video where we'll talk about deleting rows.